The Square Ball Podcast. Welcome to the show. It's brought to you with Levi Solicitors. There is a 10% discount on your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Dan here along with Michael and Rob as well on propaganda. Um, this is the show where we hear clips from the football world and we'll tackle the key questions that they throw up, such as does Jesse Marsh have tactics? Short answer. We'll get to it. <laughs> uh, what's in Steve Nichols' DVD collection and is there anybody more unbearable than Jake Humphrey? Um, it's in your podcast app, it's on YouTube and TSB Plus members look out for Propaganda Extra in your podcast feed and on the website. Bonus bonus bits of propaganda, if I can get the words out. Um, quick reminder, we've been nominated for Fan Media of the Year Award one week to go on the voting for that, um, the FSA. We've set up a website link, redirects to it, the squareball.net forward slash vote. It takes like seconds just like michael it's all over in seconds isn't it hey <laughs> hey 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 category four fan media award you can vote in the others if you want if not just give us a vote voting closes at midnight on halloween so we've got one more week or less to go on that and we'd like to win it because it's more fun than losing in it as we know at the <laughs> it's nice because if we win we can go to the awards and hopefully ours is an early one and then we can ignore the rest of it <laughs> being, unbe- <laughs> being unbearable no <nubbins. laughs> <laughs> just looking at our trophy uh, <laughs> right let's get into it then uh and the first question I want to put in your direction from clips that we found on the internet this week. At least we're not wolves, yeah? Because when times are tough, it could always be worse. That's the, that's the point to, to remember, isn't it? If, and if we can't be happy, who else can be happy? No one. Exactly. No one. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. Pay attention, Michael. You know, Wolves got pumped 4-0 by Leicester at the weekend, so they're dead sad. Um, this clip is from Talking Wolves. Two things to note. Uh, listen out for a name from Leeds United's past, which caught me by surprise. And does any of this sound vaguely familiar? At the minute, it seems like a chore. I hate it. I hate going. But we still go. I think today is just a microcosm of um, the, the bigger picture at Wolves, which in no uncertain terms is an absolute shit show from top to bottom. From top to bottom, no one's, no one's got a clue. Fans baying, baying for blood for Scott Sellers today. I understand the frustrations, but I really don't think that He's the sole reason and the sole problem. I think the problem goes above, and I think that's part of the problem with Jeff. The structure of the, the, the club is is ridiculous, and I've never known a club like it. Today, I thought we started well. First 10 minutes was good, uh, but after that, it was it was dreadful. It's, it's rotten. It's absolutely rotten. I don't agree with the singing we're fucking shit and all that. I don't think it helped, but what, what, else, have, what else have we got to sing about? It's so toxic there at the minute. And it's bold of the club to assume that we're going to be still afloat come January 2023 when they want to appoint a new manager because, plot twist, we're not going to be with performances like that. The whole situation around the managerial departure and acquisition is nothing short of negligible. And in any other business, heads would heads would, would roll. So they should. So for me, whoever's looking at this from a hierarchical point of view for Fosum, they need to sort it out because... Their investment and their asset is about to become a whole less worth than what it is now. Shambles. How does that make you feel? Um, at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could substitute the 49ers in for Fosun there, couldn't you? <laughs> Probably, Watch, Watching yeah. your investment diminish. Uh, except I suppose that he wasn't really naming names in the boardroom particularly then, was he? I know he, he did mention sales, but he was like, I don't think it's really him. I think it's elsewhere, whereas I feel like... Uh, Victor Orta has probably come in more directly in for some flack. Mm, yeah, I did I did chop a bit out of that just for timing purposes where he does actually get into um, the Jeff that he's on about, I think, is the guy that seems to be one of the owners or the majority owner. So he does he does call him out saying that he want, he feels like he, he wants contra- complete control over affairs. Um, but yeah, Scott Sellers mm. played for Leeds between 1983 and 1986 and then again in 92-93 very briefly. Um, in the post-championship season. And he is he was appointed, I had to look in at this all on Wikipedia and stuff, but he was appointed head of Wolves Academy in 2019. He's now their technical director. But there's a bit of confusion around what his role is. It's not quite clear. And I think the fans have sort of, you know, he's the lightning rod for all their frustrations at the minute. Because apparently he's in communication with the bench during the games. But the guy who's their interim manager, Steve Davis, he says he's not making football and decisions. He's just chatting about things around the game. That's how actually one, used to do. Gonna say. Yeah, with, with one of the coaches. And the songs that the fans have been singing is We Want Sellers Out, Sellers, Sellers, Make a Sub, and uh, <laughs> Scott Sellers, Get Out of Our Club, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, Wolves, 
At least we're not wolves, right? It is uh, It is comforting to hear some misery. Some yeah. shared misery, as Jesse Marsh was talking about with uh, Brendan Rogers. I feel like we've got some friends there. A good friend of mine is a Wolves fan and he texts me at full time in the Leeds game. He's, the basic gist was, surely that's your manager's final game. But then he, he did say, at least you're not Wolves. <laughs> I've never seen a team look so unlikely to score. I mean, their stats at the weekend are insane. I think they had 21 shots <laughs> and lost 4-0. Leicester had four shots on target. Um <laughs> which is actually less efficient than they were against Leeds because they had one shot on target, I think, against Leeds and scored two goals or something <laughs> like that. Um, so, yeah, a very weird game. But I suppose that's one positive to take out of the weekend. I mean, Wolves, I guess, in a way, backing up Leeds United's assertion that there are simply no strikers in world football <laughs> that you can sign because they had to go and drag Diego Costa off a beach or something, didn't they? For, um, I mean, he's only 34. I, th- I thought he was at least 40-odd, I have to say. When I younger, heard was, younger than you, Michael. When I had to sign him. He just always looked like an old man. When he was at Chelsea, he looked like he, he could have passed for about 50. Grizzled. Yeah. Yeah, grizzled. Um, with reference to the managers then, we got a message in from, from Ginger Paul. This was after the Leicester game. But it poses an interesting question about Jesse Marsh and have we seen all this before? In the wake of that Leicester game, honestly, the guy needs to get to fuck. I've given it 10 games to try and figure out a proper opinion of him and not just me jerk and say he's pish, but he fucking is. He's out of his depth. He's irritatingly, falsely positive and he's going to drag us down while still claiming that it wasn't a bad game and everyone tried hard. He's pretty much an accent and a cadence of speech away from being fucking Warnock with these post-game interviews. I'm just fucking done with him. And if at the game at Fulham on Sunday we get scalped by another team who is deservedly in the bottom section, I want him gone on the next plane and gone to fuck. (laughs) Um... The question there is, is he Warnock in disguise? Have we seen all this before? Uh, we have got more Warnock, by the way, on Propaganda Extra um, for you. Is he Warnock in disguise? I'm enjoying the use of the phrase get to fuck and <laughs> yeah. pesh. Very good, like, good uh, Scottish like uh, Phil Hayback in the Scottish room. phrases there. When the time does come for Jesse, we should get that guy to sack him <laughs> and tell him in that, <laughs> ex- those exact terms. Next to the corner flag picture on the official website, <laughs> Jesse Marsh has been told to get to fuck. Well, we, um, we do score the players and the manager out of 10, don't we, with our member feedback. TSB Plus members and Jesse got 1.38 out of 10 for the Fulham game I presume that score is yeah that's, that it was, that's not very high is it, it was, I think it was similar for Leicester I can't remember the exact number but yes it was not great and he's um, he's now only there's only junior furpo but him and between him and bottom of the league for the scores this season Oof, brutal and I mean junior furpo is he's kind of cruel having him on there is that honest. where the scale starts furpo <laughs> yeah the furpo scale um, well, there's a responsibility clearly as well in, in the boardroom, which I guess we'll get onto. But most of the questions, obviously, are around Marsh at the minute, and uh, there are the views differ on it. Um, so let's hear from a couple of people who have opposing views on this and see what we think about the uh, the question: Is this Jesse Marsh or is it is it something else? And is this Harrison's indecision? Is that the name of the person who sent this in? It is very good. Well, that was thoroughly disappointing. When we have possession, the players just don't have a clue what to do with it. And that's down to Marsh and that's down to the system. If we can't press and tackle the defenders or the defensive midfielder into making a, making a mistake, we're screwed. We haven't got a way to create anything. And that's down to Marsh and he needs to go. Rubbish. So, is it Jesse Marsh or is it not? Because Yankee John um, has a differing view on this. Thinks Jesse might not actually be the problem. Hey, guys. Yankee John here. I'm wondering if we sack Marsh, what are we looking for? Do we want to press less? Do we want to play less aggressively? The players seem to buy into the press. They run hard. They steal the ball. They get a lot of shots, especially in the first half. Ideally, those shots fall, but our strikers are shit. So we sack March. Strikers don't change. Is Bamford going to make one out of two shots a game instead of one out of four? Our defense is shit. We sack Marsh. Defense doesn't change. Play less aggressively. Defense sees more of the ball. Are we going to concede fewer goals that way? I'm from Wisconsin, so I'm a little biased. <laughs> but just trying not to jump the gun. Cheers. It was very honest of you to admit that, Yankee John. And <laughs> you've got an absolutely amazing voice as well. You should be on, like, um, on radio, I think, with that. Late night talk show host, maybe. I kind of feel like... Jesse is still a problem. He's not all of the problem by no. any stretch, 
But I do feel like if we had another way of playing, maybe you can make some other players more likely to score. I know the chances keep falling to Bamford and he's the main striker, so that would be the obvious thing to look at. But it's not like I don't feel like we're we're creating enough chances anyway, is the is the the bottom line of it. I don't feel like it it's like championship version of Bamford when he used to miss a load of chances. I used to feel like he was genuinely getting three or four really, really good opportunities a game and we were dominating as a whole and it was costing us. But actually when when you can't when the tactics were also leading you to concede three, you're asking an awful lot of your strikers to to try and peg that back, aren't you? And it does feel like the defence is exposed as well as those missing chances, doesn't it? I think. I, think. I mean, actually, Rob, it's worth saying at this point, you didn't go to the game on Sunday. <laughs> so you did the, God, I mean, wow, what a, a punishment. You sat and watched this all again, knowing what the outcome was going to be. Yeah, which was a nice way to spend my Monday evening. Um, Moscow actually messaged, messaged me asking if I could do the podcast today, asking me to bring some enthusiasm <laughs> uh, and sort of youthful energy to this podcast and I was I think I was 77 minutes in at that point and the crowd had just started singing Sack the Bod and I thought you're on your arse here Moscow but I'll give it my best shot but uh, yeah it was, it was interesting because I think earlier in the season I'd missed the Brentford game and watched that back later knowing the score and expecting it to be an absolute clusterfuck which it was but it was actually not as bad as I was expecting considering the scoreline and actually there was lots of good play in that and Leeds kept creating chances and worked the ball well. Um, and actually, I watched the Fulham game back, and it just looked like this is done. Like there was it just everything about it seemed just dead. Like the crowd, the players, there was just no kind of. There was no sense that Leeds were ever going to get back into that game once they went behind. Um, and the thing that the point that Yankee John makes, I think you know, the pressing and things like that are all good, but that has there can be other stuff as well as that. There can be a way of playing and creating chances other than tackling the defensive midfielder. And actually, there just doesn't seem to be any... Then that there never has seemed to have been. I think mm. last season, there were there was games that I absolutely hated, even games we won. I remember like, like the 3-0 win at Watford, watching that, just hating it. Like It was horrible. But you did think, well, his job here is just to keep us up. And then he's had to, the summer to kind of implement his tactics more. And actually, it just still seems the same. And I think Moscow said a few weeks back that in one of Masha's many podcast or coaching seminars, um, he laid out all these detailed plans for pressing and things like that. And then someone asked him, well, what do you actually do when you get the ball? And he just sort of went, ah, well, you, we've, there's loads of plans about that. Don't worry. <laughs> and it it does seem that way. And you think about, I actually think those three players that play behind the striker, as much as the striker is a problem and we're not scoring enough goals, those three players behind him, Harrison, Aronson, Sinistera, are all really good and creative, but we just don't seem to have a plan of how to get them into a game very much. And you think back to last season, he played Rafinha at wing-back. Like, that was his plan to get Rafinha into the game. To play and him the as a long wing-back. throws, don't, don't forget the long like, throws. Come on. Well, maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's why the defence is looking so shabby, it doesn't have Rafinha in it anymore. <laughs> but also, I think the, the defending's getting worse. I don't, we weren't as defending as bad at the start of the season I don't think and yeah. it just all no. seems to be disintegrating at the minute well they're the defending for that I mean I've got I've put some screen grabs on the prep sheet yeah. of the defending for the third goal it is absolutely awful like there are so many Leeds players in the picture and in fact let's count them one two three four five six seven eight there are nine Leeds players in that picture and Melier and yet there's nobody within what four or five yards of I was going to say and yet there are three completely unmarked well and arguably all five Fulham players in the box are unmarked it's actually quite amazing that, to, yeah. to yeah. achieve such a that, thing they're zonally marking fresh air aren't they <laughs> but what, let's, let's dip into the opposition then as well and Fulhamish um, they had some views on our defending we get the corner then the ball comes back out uh, to Prairie whips it in and Bobby Reed just is in so much space I don't really know what the Leeds defenders were doing here. I think it's in between Cooper and and someone else coming who the other defender was. But yeah, Boy Reed just glances it into the into the far post. But from a Leeds perspective, those first two goals to concede are absolutely criminal because I I just still don't understand. I've watched the highlights back multiple times. You know, last night and I, I re- rewatched back match day two this morning. Like, how is he in so much space there? Interesting question around penis ball as well that follows from all this. Um, Fuck Fizzy Drink Football is the name of the person who sent this in. And um, FFDF's uh, hot take is that Radrazani is determined to be a disruptor and has seen that in other leagues, the Red Bull high-intensity style has allowed teams to find undervalued players 
based on their physical attributes um, that then perform way above their expectation. It's a, it is a bit money ball, isn't it? Hmm. Um, and FFDF is saying our issue is that we haven't found players that fit this style and that uh, they're undervalued. For example, we spent 27 million on Aronson, so he might fit the style, but he's not undervalued. Um, 25 million for James. And um, FFDF is saying, I'm not convinced this style can work in the Premier League either. And just finishes off by saying, fuck's sake, I miss Bielsa. <laughs> <laughs> It's a fair point on the the style because it hasn't particularly worked because Randnick is the man who's the architect of this and it failed miserably. And I know Scum have got many, many problems about them and so, probably more so last year when he was brought in as a temporary measure. None more had, so than the person in the number seven shirt. He had a load of dickheads refusing to do what he was asking of them, I'm sure, as well, which can't have helped. But it didn't work there. It feels like Southampton have been on the verge of sacking Hasenhutl for about three seasons now. They're basically... He just sort of always manages to win a game and not and not be booted. But that's the other main example of it. And actually, the, when you look at how it's worked elsewhere, one of the times it really didn't work for Leipzig was when Jesse Marsh was <laughs> was doing it. Like prior to prior to and after his his stint there, it seems to have worked pretty well for him. Even like Nagelsmann tweaked his style, didn't he? But it's not yeah. worked there. Yeah, and I know well, he yeah. and he did well in he did well at Salzburg. But there are so many caveats to that aren't there about the quality of the league the quality of the management the fact he had Haaland like their, their, their budget versus the rest of the league like they should win that league well what we do know is that they're all working very hard behind the scenes which we'll come on to about the boardroom in, in just a sec um, but I guess this one points uh, a finger at Victor Orta and there's a, another interesting question here does the recruitment problem does it extend beyond the obvious and Jean-Luc Colombo has flagged up that Sinistera, who was our marquee attacking signing this time, basically plays the same position as Jackie Harrison, one of the few players that Leeds probably didn't need to upgrade. Well, it, it extends as well beyond the players we didn't sign because yeah. we tried to also get Gakpo and De Kettler, and I don't think either of those have an obvious place. It, they're not a mm. left-back or a yeah, <laughs> striker. It's your number, is, is it's your I mean number 10, isn't it? Well, that, yeah. that goes back to penis ball as well, is that he? we've got a squad kind of built on width and wingers, and we've hired a manager who plays really narrow mm. and needs width coming from his full backs when we don't have a left back we've got <laughs> we've got junior furpo but i mean we, we don't, don't have need, a left we, back we don't need to go back over that do we? um so yeah it it's not doesn't seem joined up here no i mean and i suppose you can look at go back as far as dan james as well and i know that was a bielsa thing but the fact we've got him and disposed of him again within we a should, year we should still have him you know, well, I, th- I mean, I know you're not a fan of him, Michael, but I just he's a he's a Premier League level player, regardless of whether you think his output is good enough or not. You can, <laughs> <laughs> you, can you can give him the ball and he can run with it fast past people, which is well, something we don't often seem to do. He doesn't often go past people, actually. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. I've not really missed him, but he's an. I mean, we would still have him had we not completely fucked the transfer yeah. deadline day, which is yeah. I just guess does go back to recruitment that we. We essentially got rid of him to try and sign Gakpo or, uh, I can't remember his name, Dieng, hmm. and didn't get either. And then we've got Nonto, who we've not seen yet, other yeah. than for the under 21. It, it, it's, it's fucked. They, Mal- made, they made such a mess of that. Malpractice is the word that Jean Luc Colombo uses. Why on earth didn't we sign a right sided attacker? One of many questions. They're working hard behind the scenes, though, and that's that's the important thing. Um, you missed Ellen Road, Rob, on Sunday, but you, you've been in that sort of environment before. You know what it's like when it starts to get a little bit anarchic. Where were you, by the way? I was in the Lake Districts at a wedding, so I was um, I was up a hill on Sunday when the team news came in, and my phone started going. Did you think of just jumping off the side? <laughs> yeah, well, do you know, on what? striding edge. It was absolutely pissing it down, and I thought, I'm really glad I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but, but saying that, I, I was, I was sad to miss it because I, I was intrigued to hear what Ellen Road was like. But having watched the game back, I couldn't quite believe how apathetic it seemed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Methley Chris has sent uh, a message in. Um, on this point was it weird on Sunday just walking back from the game now it all needs to throw it in the bin Marsh knows it the board know it the fans know it the apathy of the fans today the first goal celebrated like a friendly goal no, virtually no bad chance at all not, certainly nothing of, of volume it needs to be undone now so we can start after the World Cup with a fresh start write this bit off and go again it's awful no plan no idea no urgency. Embarrassing. There you go. The reaction extended to all the goals as well because the mm. Fulham goals were all glu- greeted with a, oh, for fuck's sake. Mm. And like the, the second goal, still long, I've mentioned this in the match, but still so long in the game left and there was no, like, come on, we can still we can still do this. It was a, ah, oh, well, that's that done. And when Somerville scored, I know there were only two minutes to go, 
But we've seen games before where you've, you know, the the Blackburn game under Bales, for example, where you you come back and you can you can still have at least one more attack and one Bas big push. But it felt like, oh well, consolation, fine. <laughs> I was um yeah, I was thinking that during the Leicester game when there was like half an hour left or whatever. Never, never, ever thought we'll get back into this. No. And it would have only taken a goal to really kind of change the feeling about that. And it was the same um, on Sunday. And it kind of speaks to the lack of confidence that Marsh was, was chatting about after the game. And, and I found that so worrying because Jesse Marsh is like Mr. Confidence, isn't he? That was the whole reason of bringing him in was that the players were stressed and mentally overworked under Bielsa. And you think, get this guy in and he'll be, be their mate and... You know, he's part of the WhatsApp group and he's and like doors the blow, always like they're blowing out their ass after 70 minutes. And now he's saying that they're, they're not confident. You think, that's what you're here for, though, isn't it? <laughs> you're here for the vibes. Yeah. They're um, not confident and they're not fit enough. Brilliant. Let's hear from some cottagers then. Cottage talk had this to say on our fans. Because the fans are always going to play a big part. Leeds, uh, they're amongst the most raucous in the, in the country. Right. So when things are going well, it's a tough place to play. But when they're not, and they're in the mood they were this afternoon, especially towards the end of the second half, then it turns a little ugly. Players know it. Obviously, Jesse Marsh would know it. And uh, so the recriminations will begin. There you go. The recriminations will begin. I, I don't think it did turn that ugly. I've got to be honest. There were bit, there were little pockets of it and a few chants. Yeah. But mainly people just went, ugh, it's the end of that then. <laughs> it, is the, it is the sense. It was, it was funer, funereal, funer, funereal. What's that word I mean? Yeah. Like was, a funeral. Like a funeral. It was a bit <laughs> like a funeral. Uh, well, afterwards, Kinnear was... Um, what, was he surreptitiously filmed? There's a point in this, and you might have seen this, it's been doing the rounds on Twitter. Um, Steve, the Irish Coast Guard, uh, captured this one, and it's Kinnear has been cornered, is that the right word? Talking to some Irish Norwegian fans who've been over to watch this for the weekend, and somebody is, is sort of pointing the phone in his direction, and he clocks the phone, and you see him eye the phone, as if yeah. he's like, I know I'm I'm on camera <laughs> now. If you haven't heard it, here it is. Has Jesse delivered? Yeah, look, so the results are what we need to do. Everyone knows that. So, yeah. you know, we're working behind the scenes, you know, to try and fix yeah. it. So that's, that's the thing you know, players are working hard, Jess is working really hard, Akron staff are working really hard. Have you got confidence in him, Angus? Yeah, you know, we still think he can, um, he can, you know, he can do a great job for us, but yeah, the results are what we want to do. So, you know, we'll just keep working hard and, and, and you know, focus on the next game. And that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. the best we can do. The players, they're giving 100%. They're devast- I tell you, they're devastated in there. Yeah. Where does it turn? Right, right, we've right, got right, Liverpool yeah. next week, Nick. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. All, every game's tough in this league. There you go. Um, answers on non-answers. Is Kinnear going for a career in politics? Working hard. We're yeah. all working hard. I'd lo- I would love a... It's worth it's worth watching that because I'd love a body language expert um, to analyse that because at the moment when he asks if he's got his back in, Kinnear shakes his head. <laughs> and, then, and also because we, we, we still think he can do a, like a job for us maybe not the manager's job a job and then he, and then he also tries to move it on really quickly he doesn't want to yeah. dwell on it does he, he? he really looks like a sad schoolboy that someone's put in a suit and he's sort of getting told off by his parents just like <laughs> uh, I'm sorry it's, uh, you know it's, we'll we'll change I'll do better <laughs> keep working I mean Moscow brought this in his match report as well but saying working hard doing what yeah it, it, it doesn't mean anything does it no like a, a, how how is how is everyone behind the scenes helping? Yeah, and we know to keep doing the same, harder. Yeah. Well, I was going to say exactly. I'm glad you said that because that was basically uh, apparently Bielsa's response to this was to work even harder, and it was cited as one of the reasons for sacking him. So if if all it is is just working harder, then history would tend to suggest that uh, the club don't like that. <laughs> You're not too hard, right? Just Jesse. <laughs> there's, a, there's a hard sweet spot. Just Jesse hard. Not too hard. That's just what you need. Perfect hardness. Right, maybe Steve Nicol. Do you think he's absolutely nailed this? Because Steve Nicol is former Liverpool defender. He's a pundit for ESPN now in the USA, and this is him. But talking about was this was after Leicester. Then it wasn't. Yeah, it got to the disaster of Same yet. thing, basically. Yeah, same vibes. Well, the way to get it out is to win some games, and to do that, you've got to score goals. And I have no idea where the goals are coming from. I mean, to me. I mean, Bamford had a good se- a good first season in the Premier League, no question. But to me, he's not a goal scorer. And they don't have anybody else that, that you can rely on to score goals. No, well, I, I, I wouldn't rely on him either. So I, I'd, the only way to stay up is if there are three teams that are just that bad. And, and it's kind of close, because I think there's half a dozen sides at the bottom of the Premier League that could go down. Um, so they might be lucky. Uh, they'll certainly give 
They'll generally give everything they have. Uh, I don't think you can ever question the desire. Certainly was like that under Bielsa. Uh, I think it's it's the same under Jesse Marsh. They, they always give everything. I just don't think they're that good. And, and as I said, their biggest problem for me will be getting some goals because I have no idea who's going to score for them in order for them to win games. I love that they still are quite transparently doing what we said before, which is to put a little jazzy bed underneath him, just because he's so dour sounding that it's, they've got to do something just to lift it. Sounds like the weirdest Quentin Tarantino film <laughs> that soundtrack. Oh dear. Uh, good old Steve. He's fair old nailed it, hasn't he? We're just he not, probably has, not, unfortunately. Not, I mean, we did we did score twice against, um, yeah. against Fulham. But it's, it says a lot, doesn't it, that when Moscow published his, his match report on the website, which is a good read, by the way, as we mentioned there, he put 3-1, because it didn't even feel like we scored the second goal. <laughs> In my mind, it was it was three one. Even though I was there and witnessed the uh, the second one. I mean, the goals could come from Gelhart and Somerville, I suppose. We've not yeah. seen enough of them. But and chances of them coming from Gelhart are minimal if he gets eight minutes. That is correct, mm. and that is a Jesse Marsh choice. Yep. Uh, you have had great fun compiling this particular clip, Michael, because this was Stevie dialing in from home, wasn't it? He wasn't in the studio mm. this time. He often is calling in from home. And he's got, and you've you've gone a bit Hollywood movie on this, haven't you? But the the ultra enhancing of yeah, so of just, images. Just to explain, he sat there in front of his bookshelf, his DVD collections there, just behind him. He's got a pig holding a football. That's nice. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a trophy that on a previous clip they once asked him what the trophy was behind him, and he was he basically pretended he couldn't look at it. He was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, what? And the, the trophy behind you, Stevie? What is it? Just and he's turn like, you, he's going, well, I can't see it. And they were going, well, just don't turn around then. And he was going, he couldn't get I it. can't see it. I'm, I'm looking at you. And they were like, yeah, but you don't have to be. Just turn around. You're in the room, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, it feels like the modern era has bypassed him a little bit, doesn't it? But you, what you've done is you've taken screen grabs from this and you've done the old Hollywood computer enhance mm. to try and see what's on his uh, on his DVD shelf just to get a glimpse into his amazing life. Um, was it Nicola? Did he save someone from drowning or did he nearly drown? He nearly drowned. That was it, yeah. He, he, was, he, he nearely killed someone by setting the hair on fire. It was Gary <laughs> yeah. Ablett's wife. He set, yeah. he set her hair on fire. I'm yeah. not saying she nearly died, but her hair, yeah. was on, her hair was on fire. If your hair's on fire, you know you're in trouble. Yeah. It's, it's not a good situation to be in, is it? Maybe not so much for you. But... It's unlikely, but <laughs> what hair I've got, I will not want setting on no, fire. No, no, absolutely, yeah. Just keep flames away from my head <laughs> as, a, as a general it's rule. It's a good rule of thumb, isn't it? Yeah. But Steve thought that was a good laugh anyway. But you know, then he... I think while well, he played for Sheffield Wednesday, from memory, he had to be dragged out of a out of a pond. <laughs> Mind by... you, if if I was forced to play for Sheffield Wednesday, I would just want the waters <laughs> to wash over me. <laughs> so he was anyway. So he's he's a man of the past. Is Steve Nichol? Uh, they is look the like v- they look like VHSs to me. Do those as well as some DVDs? Some of them might be because of his three casualty box sets <laughs> that he's got. I mean, casualty by the way, because we do have people listening abroad. Is basically a, a drama set in a hospital, Saturday night TV. Long running hospital yeah. drama, probably started 90s, yeah. early 90s. Think, I'd say. think ER, but less sexy. E- each episode usually starts with an emergency, like yeah. someone yeah. having their hair set on fire. Or... <laughs> yeah. Or like someone, man going, that's, can... why, that's why he likes it. I know, I know, I, I know this pond's thick enough for me to walk on. That sort of, uh, that sort of thing. I'm just going to retrieve my ball from over here. <laughs> yeah, so there's always, there's always a. a a comedy setup almost at the start of it, which we're going, <laughs> I know how to change a light bulb, that yeah. sort of a thing. Let me hang on. i sweat my fingers, <laughs> that kind of jazz. So it? he's got in his collection, sadly I can't I can't work all of it out. Yeah. But he's got so he's got three three casualty box sets. Yeah. Which is because casualty it's one of those things that it when in the days prior prior to Netflix You'd sort of watch it sometimes, wouldn't you? Cause yeah, because it was Saturday night, it was on the TV. It was that or, if you didn't want to watch the light entertainment on the other side, you'd watch that, the drama on the other. Yeah, you had like four channels, so you yeah. might have got like, it might have been against Gladiators or something on ITV, which, yeah. was, which was good. I'd have watched yeah. Gladiators, but um, yeah, it was like, it's kind of a thing you might watch if it was on. But Stevie has gone, well, I might have moved to America but I'm going to need my casualty. So I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to rewatch some old episodes. <laughs> so he's got that. He's got, a couple of down, he's got a big Downton Abbey box set, and then another one next to it, which might I'm thinking is maybe the Christmas special or something. Yep. Then he's got have you, have you watched Downton Abbey? Um, some of it. I used to work at ITV, didn't I? So I oh, you have to, do you have watched, to? Well, used to it was, sit you down, put sticks in your eyes, and force it was a, you it was a big it. deal on it. it yeah, yeah it was not, not really for me, I have to say, but no, I am, I am kind of aware of it. What you one, really should do more on your time at ITV. One, <laughs> <laughs> what if I have to, what if I have to go back into it? 
if, if this goes tits up, I mean, please have me back. I'll be honest, they're hugely unlikely to have me back. <laughs> <laughs> why, is, why is that? Um, is that because your work output dropped to an absolutely disgraceful level towards the end? I mean, it probably did, but it was still better than a lot of people. <laughs> 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 which is which is not saying much, is it? Um, yeah, I, I sent a slightly shitty email on my exit as well. As what, well. what did it say? I just chucked a couple of people under the bus. Oh, bit. really? Only dickheads. Your managers? Uh, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, good lad. Not immediate manager, but yeah, some of the... Uh, not the ones you liked, obviously. Some of the, Yeah, some of the more um, difficult to love personalities <laughs> <laughs> in there. But no, what, an, what an inspirational colleague you are. During my time at ITV, one thing I never watched was The Commander. Do you remember that? Uh, no, no, no. No. He's got that. Was that a it, police drama, is it? Yeah, we, you almost couldn't write this, because if you were taking the piss of Steve Nichol, you'd go for something a bit more mainstream or something that he might have a, choose to have a box set of. But yeah, The, the Commander was a, a British crime drama broadcast on ITV1 starring Amanda Burton. Um, now it appears to be on Acorn TV, so you might be able to find it. Between 2003 and 2008. So he's got, he's got a box set of that as well that he's going to watch. Yep. And the weirdest thing he's got, <laughs> because he's got several of these... Mm -hmm. You can, it's so blurry, it was kind of hard to make out, but I was like, is that word... Computer enhanced. I think the word is kettle on yeah. that. So then I started I started trying to find things concerning the word kettle. I thought maybe it was, um, what, spying kettle or something? Mm -hmm. But it's the singing kettle. Right, yeah. Have you ever heard of the singing kettle? I mean, I have now. I mean, you're asking me this question. I've looked at this sheet, so yeah, I have now. But he's got several of these. He's got at least three singing kettle DVDs. Yeah. Um, and I've got a little clip to to show you what, what the singing kettle do. This is the intro from a BBC Kids <laughs> series of the 90s. Okay. Catchy is this, isn't it? I'm just going to talk over this so we don't get done by the algorithm for playing oh, out songs. Yeah, so we should just I'm talk not, over this. I'm not sure a live version of the singing kettle is going to be picked up by any, <laughs> any algorithm. It's, also, that's an old song, isn't it? Surely you can... It's, yeah, it's a traditional song. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you, can probably, probably. you can probably get it anyway. Anyway, yeah, it ends there. there you go. And I, Steve, I Steve is a man in his 60s, I believe, isn't he? Uh, that's um, that's what I imagine the inside of Andrea Radrizani's brain sounds like. <laughs> I don't say that because we'll be fucking running out to that song in another couple of weeks <laughs> against, against Bournemouth. <laughs> Jesus wept. Um, should we have a little bit of Jake bashing before we go? Uh, why not? Yeah, I mean, do you, do you have this is the big the final question I want to pose from this show? Um, do you have what it takes to be world class, like Jake Humphrey is implying he is? I already am. This show. Um, so Humphrey, if you don't know who he is, he's a football TV presenter on BT Sport in the UK, and he has a podcast. No, he called invented the podcast. Yeah, well, I was going to say, he, he pioneered the podcast format through his uh, very recently conceived high-performance podcast, mm. didn't he? Um, we, we should probably explain that joke for anybody who's not seen it. It's a, quite a niche joke about him uh, trying to claim ownership of how great podcasts are because he happened to put one out that's moderately successful. <laughs> Bearable twat. Uh, anyway, he's, he's getting down to the important stuff um, on one of his more recent ones. World-class basics. You talk about clean your desk, make your bed get your things in order. Can you explain to us why those seemingly insignificant things matter so deeply? Make your bed. Tidy up. Mm. So you don't get told off by your mum, innit? <laughs> <laughs> You're still living at home. Bless him, Jake. I, I do hear people talk about these things as if like it's a... Big revelation or something. Something yeah. to have achieved at the start of the day and it gets you on the right track and stuff. But my problem is with stuff like this. It's why I can't handle jigsaws and stuff as well I just think well anyone could do that given enough time yeah <laughs> so I think it's sort of pointless isn't it <laughs> which I don't think is what you need for a motivational podcast do you do you make your bed um yeah but that's well, so my wife don't tell me off but then she remakes it because I don't do a nice enough job of it of course yeah but and, that, there's, and puts, there's always merits in that though not quite doing a job well enough so you don't have to do it and again. she puts the cushion on it which then gets fucked off at the end of every day because mm. the cushion on a bed obviously doesn't achieve anything does it so yeah, we've, she, got, we've got three on ours lobbed on the floor every night what a waste of time just to sit in a corner <laughs> <laughs> I've also got the pillowcase I'm not allowed to use I can't remember why there's some <laughs> <laughs> which pillow do you sleep on and that has to go in a particular pillowcase 
I, I, I don't fucking know. I just go along with it. <laughs> just stay quiet. <laughs> I just go. Are you, oh, that's oh, fine. Well, it's whatever. Do you make your bed, Rob? Yeah, not not particularly well, but I'm happy not to be world class in that sense. It's fine. You'll get over it. Yeah. Uh, more propaganda over but, on propaganda extra then. Jake, we did discover in the past week as well. Did you see his pictures of his home gym that he put on, where he has looked a bit sort of prisony vibes, didn't it? A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. But I think it's in his basement of his really nice house that he always posts pictures yeah. on. Just he's, to... but he's humble. Remember, you've got to be humble. Stay he, humble. He is very like. And, and Jim, when he posted that picture of his, it was Ferrari or whatever it was, some sports car parked outside Norwich Market. <laughs> you know, like it's all just kind of just back, pop into the market, yeah, back, <laughs> back where it all began, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, don't forget your roots. And he's like, what he meant is. I'm a twat. Look at my posh car. Just all the chairs though in his house, incredibly uncomfy. Well, I, I mean, in his gym, he's got it says on the wall, doesn't it? And what it's, it's it's a, one of them says, "Enforce your will," which I think is a little bit. <laughs> that's not very. That's not very cool. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> not it, not that he's ever done it on anyone who didn't want it enforcing on them. But surely that is enforcing, isn't it? If, yeah. if it has to, enforcement must therefore meet some sort of resistance. But I think this is probably a discussion for another day. <laughs> Isn't Levi's it? solicitors, ten percent off. <laughs> Thanks, Levi's. <laughs> there was, they were just hovering there in the corner of your mind, aren't they? When you're doing this show, and there you go. That does wrap up propaganda. We've got more propaganda extra on the way for you. A little bit of Warnock as well, which is probably safer over there, mm, away from his solicitors. From his solicitors. <laughs> and Ghost Shark, remember Ghost Shark who came on with the um, the deep gravelly voice? Yep. Ghost Shark over on that. So check out. Oh, um, oh, look, Warnock solicitors actually have always been fairly. Um, standoffish haven't they when people have made some quite libelous comments about Warnock in the past that he's, brings it to the end he's, of always cho- he's always chosen not to sort of pursue any of those things I think let's just let's just wrap it just up there David- thank you for listening and watching <laughs> <laughs> and we'll speak to you soon The Square Ball Podcast 